Hi, Prince and Princesses. I'm Auntie Kay, and this is our children's Sabbath school program. And guess what? You are welcome to come along with me. Auntie Kay is back. I missed you all last week. I was out sick, but thankfully I'm back today and I'm feeling so much better. I'm so happy, happy, happy to be here with you so that we could go through lesson eight. Yes, lesson eight. And it is Nehemiah's God's Builder. Hello, my beautiful and handsome prince and princesses. I'm happy to be here. I'm so happy. I am so happy. So very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my H-E-A-R-T. I am happy to be here with you. Yes, I am. Let's have a word of prayer to our Heavenly Father before we go any further. Let's close our eyes and clasp our hands. This is the day, O oh God, that you have made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Another beautiful Sabbath where together prince and princesses all around the world can come to learn about you. Father, thank you for being with us throughout this week. Thank you for helping us for this upcoming week, O oh God. Thank you for your love and your mercies. In Jesus' awesome name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Lesson eight. Let's jump right into our welcome. Hello and welcome to Andy Gay's Children's South School Program where Prince and Princesses all around the world get to enjoy and learn about the love of God. Through sign language, messages with Princess Malloray, character teachers from Nails, Nate to Nugget, sing along time, very verses. Story Hill with Princess Da Vinci, test your knowledge with Quiz Kids, hashtag Puzzle Fun. Enjoy object lessons with Auntie Patty Pat, Bible questions with Ask Pastor Nasa, create crafty crafts and cook yummy goodness with the girls' tasty treats. So, no matter where you're living on this great big planet, you are welcome to participate, enjoy and share. Yes, we live far and wide, but God's love connects us no matter how you look, where you're from, the color of your skin, or even your culture. Welcome! And we've been welcomed. I feel welcome. I hope you feel welcomed also. And so now it's time to hear our message sign of the day with Princess Marla Ray. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Let's sign together. God gives me the grace and power to do his well our message sign of the day says god gives me the grace and power to do his will thank you so much princess mallory for sharing with us our message sign of the day and coming up it's time for us to get our praises on to our heavenly father with a it's sing a long time this little light of mine i'm gonna let it shine this little light of mine i'm gonna let it shine
you the gift of love. On a Tuesday, this piece came down from above. On a Wednesday, it told me just what to say. On a Thursday, it taught me just how to pray. On a Friday, it gave me a little more faith. On a Saturday, it gave me a lot more. Everybody gets a heart. Everybody gets a soul. Everybody gets a mind to let them know that we can be smart and we can be kind and we can be living by giving and loving all the time. So on the days when it's feeling tough and it seems. Like you don't have enough. Well, let's be thankful, thankful for our friends and family, and grateful for the air that we breathe and appreciate, appreciate everything that we have today. Hey. Let's be generous to anyone who has less than us. It's good to be compassionate. Cause ever since the day you were born, yeah, we've got a lot to be thankful for. Yeah, we've got a lot to be thankful for. Everybody gets the land, and everybody gets a seed. So everybody lend a hand to those in need. 'Cause we can be nice, we can be nice, we can all share, and we can keep growing together. It's better when everyone cares. So on the days when it's feeling tough, and it seems like you don't have enough, well, let's be thankful for our friends and family, and grateful for the air that we breathe and appreciate everything that we have today. Let's be generous to anyone who has less than us. It's good to be compassionate. 'Cause ever since the day you were born, yeah, you got a lot to be thankful for. Yeah, we've got a lot to be thankful for. So, what are you thankful for?
it seems like you don't have enough Well, let's be thankful for our friends and family And grateful for all the air that we breathe And appreciate everything that we have today Let's be generous to anyone who has less than us It's good to be compassionate Cause ever since the day you were born Yeah, you got a lot to be thankful for time bump a sing a long time and now it's time for us to hear from Prince Niall as he's going to share with us some great character building tips hi guys have you ever wondered what life would be like without our ears I think it would be horrible here are some lessons our ears can teach us number one be balanced your ear contains semicircular canals filled with fluid and hear sensors. These ears help to send signals to your muscles to help you balance. Is your life balanced? Organize your time and activities to achieve balance. Number two, pay attention. Our ears allow us to hear, but we need to pay attention. God wants us to pay attention to him. Don't just read or hear the word, pay attention. Number three, small things are important too. The ear is a small organ, but it is really important. Are you small? Do not worry, you are important too. Isn't it incredible? Ears are amazing character features. Now that we've added to our ever-growing list of what to do and how we could be better, which comes to us every week from Prince Nile, where he shares with us character building tips, mm -hmm, we've added so much more to it. And I just want to say a great big thank you to Nile. Thank you so much. It's now time for us to hear our memory verse for lesson eight. <laughs> Lesson 8 memory verse is The gracious hand of God, my God was on me. Nehemiah 2 verse 8 
Memory Verse with Princess Ladybug. Thank you so much. And now it's time for us to hear our story for today from Lesson 8, Nehemiah's God's Builder. And Auntie Kay will be reading the story for us today. So let's make sure our ears are turned up. Turn them up. Crank them up. Turning and turning. Yes. And now let's take a listen to our story from our quarterly Lesson 8, Nehemiah, God's Builder. How come the pastor's always asking for money? asked Jessica. Because our church family has outgrown our old church and we need a new one, answered Dad. It takes money and a lot of people willing to help to build, explained Dad. It reminds me of Nehemiah rebuilding Jerusalem's walls. I'm so glad to see you, Nehemiah exclaimed, hugging his brother Hanani. Hanani had recently arrived with others from Judah. How are you? How are the rest of the Jews surviving back in Jerusalem? The smile left Hanani's face. Not well, he said sadly. The wall around Jerusalem has been torn down. The gates have all been burned. Enemies could walk right in and attack God's people. Nehemiah sank into a chair. Tears spilled down his cheeks. For days, Nehemiah mourned. He fasted and he prayed. Oh, Lord, he pleaded. Listen to my prayer. I'm going to ask the king for a great favor. Please put it into his heart to be kind to me. One evening, Nehemiah went to work as usual. He carried the king's drink to him at the dinner table. The king looked up. Why do you look so sad tonight? He asked. Long live the king, Nehemiah exclaimed. I am sad because the city where my ancestors are buried, it's in ruins. How can I help you? The king kindly asked. Nehemiah prayed a quick, silent prayer. Then he answered the king, Please send me to Judah to rebuild the city where my ancestors are buried. Nehemiah took a deep breath. He had more to ask. Oh, king, please give me a letter to take to the manager of your forest. Tell him to give me wood so I can build. I will rebuild the city gates and the walls and a house for myself. The king wrote the letter. Then he ordered army officers and soldiers on horseback to go with Nehemiah. They would protect him on the long, long journey to Jerusalem. Nehemiah finally reached Jerusalem. After staying, <laughs> my neighbor's cat just came in and he wants to say hi. Hello. <laughs> Nehemiah finally reached Jerusalem. After staying there three days, he rode his donkey around at night to look at the damage. He found that he couldn't even ride through some of the gates of the city. They were blocked with big rocks that had been part of the wall. Then Nehemiah spoke to the city leaders. He told them about the king and how God had helped him so far. Let's rebuild the wall of Jerusalem, he exclaimed. So the people began the work. And they worked hard. But their enemies made plans to attack and kill the Jews. The Jews prayed and asked God to protect them. Then Nehemiah told them to get their swords, their spears, and their bows and arrows. They would guard the wall with one hand and work with the other. With the... <laughs> Don't be afraid of the enemy. Remember the Lord, Nehemiah encouraged them. Many times the enemies tried to stop the rebuilding work. But Nehemiah prayed constantly, and God gave him the wisdom to know what to do. The work continued, and the wall was finished in just 52 days. God blessed this project in many ways. He gave Nehemiah courage to ask the king for help. He gave the workers power to carry on their rebuilding. God truly led his people. And this goes so well with our message that says, God gives me the grace and the power to do his will. Thank you for listening to our story. And at this time, we're going to head on over to hear Thim and Nathan as they share with us what they would have learned.
So what is the will of God? You yeah. say when you do something that is right, but how do you know that something that you do is right? Because if, if I do my homework and I don't complain, that's the right thing. Okay, that's not complaining. Example. So you are you are following some rules that you have learned, Good. right? Good. Okay, so Tim, what about you? But in general, like, let's say something normal, like maybe you want to buy a car, or you want to build something like Jeremiah, how do you know that is the will of God? Because, uh, like, God can tell you. He can speak to you. We're yeah. supposed to wait. Okay, so... We're supposed to wait. Okay. And then, when, when we wait, God will, God will do it. Okay, we, so, Tim is right. So, God can speak to us in different ways, right? Mm -hmm. And we will know that, okay, that is the will of God. Okay, mm -hmm. so from that story, then that we saw of Deborah Maya, can you tell to the boys and girls one thing that you learn from the story of this week? Me, mm -hmm. I learned that I'm supposed to obey God every day and also do my homework quietly and yes, and do everything. Okay, me, I learned to be obedient. Obedient and very, kind because God is always with us. Obedient and kind. Okay. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Thim and Nathan, for sharing that great lesson that you'd have learned from Lesson 8. And because those listening ears were definitely turned on and turned up, it's now time for Quiz Kids. What was the name of Nehemiah's brother that he hugged? Was it A. Jeremiah, B. Ezekiel, or C. Hanani? C. Hanani. Where was Hanani visiting from? Was it A. Egypt, B. Jerusalem, or C. Samaria? B. Jerusalem Nehemiah worked for the king. What was his usual job? Was it A. a cupbearer, B. A musician, or C. Cook? A. He was the cupbearer. The king did not give Nehemiah permission to return to Jerusalem. Is this A. False or B. True? A. False. Hashtag Puzzle Fun. Hashtag Puzzle Fun is coming up. Maya God's Builder Puzzle Directions Use the code to find out what Nehemiah rebuilt with God's help. We're going to use the numbers to find the letters. Let's begin. 15 is going to be W. 1 is A with 7 being L with another 7 being L with 12 being S. So that spells walls. One is A, nine is N, and two is D, and five is G. One would be A, 13 would be T, with three being E, and 12 being S, spelling gates. 10 is O with 4 being F off. We're nearly there. 6 would be J, 3 would be E, 11 would be R with 12, no, not 12, <laughs> with 14 being U and 12 being S, 1 being A, 7 being L, and 3 being E, with 8 being M, and that spells Jerusalem. 
God helped Nehemiah to rebuild the walls and gates of Jerusalem. And now it's time for our Bible question with the... Ask Pastor Nasa. Pastor Nasa, I've been trying to hear God's voice for a very long time. But no matter how quiet I've tried to be, I still can't hear him. What should I do? Hey, thank you so much for that question. It's a really good one. Well, you know, in the book of Romans chapter 10 and verse 17, the Bible says... For faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of God. You see, boys and girls, for us to hear God's voice, we need to know what God sounds like. And the best thing to help us to know what God sounds like is the Bible. That's right. When we spend time reading the Bible and we pray, God starts to reveal to us the way that he speaks. We start to see the type of things that he says because we see the type of things that he did say in the Bible already. And that helps us boys and girls to understand God's voice for ourselves. Then, Maybe we need to ask our parents. Maybe we need to ask our pastor. Maybe we need to talk to somebody else who we know hears God's voice or they claim God speaks to them and ask them, what type of things does God say to you? And does it line up with the Bible? And when we put them together and we ask the Holy Spirit to help us, then we can hear God's voice. Isn't it wonderful that God can speak to us as boys and girls? I want God to speak to me. How about you? Then let's give our lives to Jesus and he can start speaking to us today. See you next time. That is such a great question. Thank you so much, my prince, all the way over there in Jamaica. And thank you, Pastor Nasso, for being here to be able to answer it. And now it's time for us to head on over to Crafty Craft Corner and see what craft Auntie Polly, <laughs> I was about to say Auntie Patty Pat, and Polly would have gotten from our story. Let's head on over. Polly, yes, we are rebuilding the wall as Nehemiah did. Thank you, Aunt Polly, for that terrific and crafty craft. It's now time for us to hear our mission story for Lesson 8. <music> Thank you. 
a fish, and a light. Two very unusual things happened on a Friday in Vanuatu, a country of many small islands in the South Pacific. Father was walking along the beach when he saw fish on the white sand. He had seen fish before on the white sand, but this was no ordinary fish. This fish was very much alive, and it was unhurt. Quickly, Father picked the fish and went to show it to John. John was new to the island. He was visiting from another island. Since he didn't know anyone, Father had invited him to stay at his home. Look at this, Father said, showing John the very much alive fish. John was amazed. He had never seen anything like this before. The second unusual thing happened a few hours later as the sun went down. John invited Father and his family to sit outside the house and listen to stories about Jesus. Father, mother, and the children listened as John read the Bible. As they listened, a bright light began to shine inside the house. The light was so bright that Father was scared, mother was scared, the children were scared. Father walked over to the front door of the house and went inside. He saw, to his surprise, that an old lantern was somehow working. Hmm. The battery-powered lantern had not worked for some time. Father picked up the lantern to take a closer look. Then the lantern's light went out. Father took the lantern outside to show the others. He opened it up and saw that there were no batteries inside. He tried to turn on the lantern again, but he couldn't. This must be a miracle, John said. Father thought about what John had said. He thought about the live, unhurt fish. He thought about the bright light and the old lantern without batteries. He kept all these things and pondered them in his heart. Sometime later, John invited Father to go with him to another island. On the island, Father and John attended a big evangelistic meeting in a sports stadium. Father watched as 3,000 people gave their hearts to Jesus in baptism. Hmm, that's beautiful. He remembered the live, unhurt fish on the white sandy beach. He remembered the bright light in the lantern without batteries. Those were miracles, he thought. He decided to give his heart to Jesus. Today, Father is the leader of a Seventh-day Adventist church on his island. After two unusual things happened on a Friday in Vanuatu, his life has never been the same again. Thank you for your 13 Sabbath offering this quarter that will help other families in Vanuatu and across the world know more about God through a series of children's TV programs called King's Kids Disciples Series. Let's save our money this quarter to help make the children's TV programs that will help children understand that God loves them. A fish and a light. What a great story and such an awesome testimony of God's miracles. Mm -hmm. Our program has come to an end. Lesson 8 is done. It is finished. It is over, which means we'll be moving on to Lesson 9 come next week. Thank you, my prince and princesses, for spending this time with me. Give yourselves a nice big hug. Thank you, thank you. I love spending these beautiful Sabbath moments with you where together we learn so much. So, before I go, I must always remind us of God's awesome love. I mean, when I say He loves us so much, He loves us oh so much that He sent His only Son to die on a cross for you and I. Mm -hmm. If that isn't love, I don't know what is. So, at this time, I just want to say thank you, Lord, for loving us so much. And guess what? Another way we can show and tell God that we love Him is by inviting, inviting Him into our hearts so He could teach us the ways in which we should be, how we should love, what we should do, the things we should say, the things we shouldn't do, the things we shouldn't say. Mm -hmm. So one way of showing our Heavenly Father that we love Him is by inviting Him into our hearts. Until next week, Sabbath, my beautiful and handsome friends and princesses, mwah, I love you. Let's end with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be my name. Thou kingdom come, thou will be done. On earth 
as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord's Prayer Happy Sabbath, everyone! Happy Sabbath, everyone! Happy Sabbath, everyone! Happy Sabbath! Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Bye. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, everyone. And we'll see you all again next week.